Welcome. This is my instructional video for section 19-2, transversals and parallel lines. Okay, a transversal is a line that intersects two coplanar lines at different points. So here, P and Q are lines. T is the transversal. Now, if I drew another line in here, boom, and I label this, I don't know, line R, Then R and T are both transversals for P and Q, because both R and T cut two other lines, P and Q. And then P and Q are also transversals for T and R, because P cuts two different lines, T and R, and Q cuts two different lines. So if it cuts two or more lines, it should say or more here, <clears throat> It's a transversal. Bam! Pretty sexy, yeah. Okay. So, here we go. Now we have two lines, P and Q, cut by the transversal T. We have all these angles that are numbered. No, there's, there's eight angles. Now, here's what they mean. Corresponding angle. So, what's a corresponding angle? Corresponding angle is like this. <clears throat> Notice, for P... 1 is the upper left angle. So for Q, 5 is also the upper left. So 1 and 5 correspond. So angle 2 is the upper right angle. So for line Q here, 6 is the upper right angle. So 2 and 6 correspond. So line f or angle 4 here is the lower left angle. And for this angle group, the lower left angle is angle 8. So 4 and 8, they correspond because they're in the same relative position for both lines, P and Q. <clears throat> or for each line, P and Q, that would be a better way of saying it. And then, of course, the lower right line here, or lower right angle, 3 and 7, they correspond. So those are corresponding angles. Now, <clears throat> same side interior angle. So here's the deal. We have P, we have Q. We have the transversal. So in between P and Q, these are the interior angles here, because that's the inside in between the two lines. 1, 2, 8, and 7, those are exterior angles. So same side interior angles are 4 and 5, because they're on the same side of the transversal, and 6 and 3. Again, same side of the transversal. So these are same side interior angles. The old name for this is consecutive interior angles. So now alternative interior angles, alter, or alternate interior angles, they are on alternate sides of the transversal. So notice four and three, they're on alternate sides, but they're in the same angle group up here. These guys already have a name, they're a linear pair. So when we say alternate interior angles, that'd be four and six. And then, of course, another pair of alternate interior angles is 3 and 5. Interior angles that are not already defined in a relationship, like linear pair, and that are on alternate sides of the transversal. And then alternate exterior angles. Well, hey, 8 is on the left side of the transversal. It's an exterior angle. And 2 is on the other side of the transversal up here. Now, notice these guys can't be alternate exterior angles because they already have a relationship. They're a linear pair. So 8 and 2 are exterior, ang exterior alternate exterior angles. And then 1 and 7 are also alternate exterior angles. <coughs> so those are the names. You have to know these names. There's no way around that. And then what happens when we have two lines that are parallel? They're cut by transversal. Well, here's the thing. Since these two lines are parallel, we'll call them line A and line B. What that means is this, this angle group here and this angle group here are identical. So notice there's eight different angles, but there's only two measures. So let's say angle two here has a measure of 60 degrees. Angle one, because they're a linear pair to each other, will be 120. Notice one and four are alternate inter angles, so they're 120. It's, it's 120. Six, angle two and three are, um, Okay, what did I say? I don't know what I said. These are vertical angles. 120, uh, 1 and 4 are vertical angles. 2 and 3 are vertical angles, so they're congruent. And here's the thing. This same picture for an angle, because A and B are parallel, is the same picture here. So this is 120. This is 60. 
This is 120 or 60 over here. And 120 here for angle 8. So here's a chart for the relationships. <clears throat> when parallel lines are cut by transversal, the corresponding angles are congruent. Like, hey, 1 and 5, they correspond, they're the same. 2 and 6 correspond, they're the same measure. 4 and 8 correspond, they're the same measure. 3 and 7 correspond, they're the same measure. Of course, because the angles here look just like the angles there. So the upper left guy is going to be the same measure as the upper left guy down here. So same side interior angles. Actually, let's skip that. Let's go alternate interior angles. So alternate interior angles 3 and 6. Hey, they're both 60. 4 and 5, they're both 120. So alternate interior angles are congruent. And then alternate exterior angles. Oh, 7 and 2. Notice they're both uh, 60 degrees. 1 and 8, they're both 120 degrees. So alternate exterior angles are congruent. So for all these named angle relationships between the two angle groups, three out of the four are congruency. Now, the only ones that are supplementary are the same side or consecutive interior angles. So notice 6 and 4, they are supplementary. 60 and 120, they make 180. 3 and 5, 60 and 20, they make 180. <clears throat> so here's the thing. When you have two parallel lines cut by transversal and there's an obvious angle here, then what you can see is like, hey, this guy's acute, clearly, and then this guy's clearly acute. Same with 6 and 7. All four of those angles are congruent. So whatever acute angle is the measure here, they're all the same. And then, obviously, angle 1 is obtuse. Well, so is 4 obtuse, and of course they're vertical, so they're congruent for that reason. But 5 and 8 also look obtuse. So all the angles that look obtuse are the same measure. So 1, 4, 5, and 8. So here's the thing. When you have parallel lines that are cut by a transversal, even though you have 8, eight angles, you only have two different measures. <clears throat> Unless... The, the transversal is perpendicular, and then all eight angles are the same. They're all 90 degrees. That's the exception. But other than that, there's only two measures. There's an acute angle, in this case 2, 3, 6, and 7, and there's an obtuse angle, which the measures are for angles 1, 4, 5, and 8. And each of those have a theorem. This is the corresponding angle postulate that says these guys are congruent. It's the same side interior angle theorem that says the, the, the same side interior angles are supplementary. The alternate interior angle theorem says they're congruent. Alternate extra angle theorem says the alternate extra angles are congruent. And the hypothesis here is always the two lines that are cut by the transversal are parallel. So the lines that are being cut are parallel. There's the symbol for parallel. Okay, if this is true, all these are true. <clears throat> so here we go. Uh, a and B are parallel, so these guys here are parallel. Explain how to find a measure of angle VTU. So VTU, so we're looking for this angle right here. So hey, what do we know about this angle here? Well, this is corresponding to this guy right here, so they're congruent, and then these two guys are vertical, so they're congruent. So if X plus 40 is congruent to the angle here at R, then, and r is congruent to 2x minus 22, that means x plus 40 is equal to 2x minus 22. There's our relationship. And by the way, notice, hey, all these blue angles are acute. Because there's a little tilt here like this from perpendicular, so it's kind of obvious, right? And all the green angles are obtuse. Since a and b are parallel, all the blue angles are the same measure. All the green angles are the same measure. So green guy, green guy have to be equal. So x plus 40 has to be equal to 2x minus 22. <clears throat> so we're going to add negative x to both sides. That's going to get the x's all coming here to the right. So I'm going to get rid of the negative 22 by adding its opposite to both sides. So over on the left the x's cancel, over on the right the 22's cancel. So 2x minus 1x, that's actually going to be 1x equals 40 and 22, that sounds like 62. 
So it says find the measure of VTU. So find the measure of this angle right here. So 2 times 62 is 124. And then we're going to minus, one, uh, minus 22 from that. So that's going to make that angle 102. Final answer. And by the way, this is 62 plus 40. This is 102 as well. So yes, that's the correct solution for x because both of these end up being 102. So the, the measure of the angle we're looking for, 102. Next problem. Okay. So the diagram of a gate, the horizontal bars are parallel. So this guy here is parallel to this guy there. <clears throat> and the vertical bars are parallel to each other. Okay. Find x and y. Name the postulates or theorems you use to find the values. Okay. Well, here we go. These guys are parallel. So this guy here is a transversal. These are alternate interior angles. What do we know about alternate interior angles? When a transversal cuts parallel lines, we know they're congruent. So this angle here, 3x plus 2y. equals 36. Oops, forgot to put the 3 in there almost. Now I've got two different variables here, so I can't really solve. I need another equation. So we're going to change colors here and switch gears. So we know this angle here is 126, and that this angle here is 12x plus 2y. You know, it's hard to tell. It would have been nice if they drew this like there, closer to that but I'm pretty sure that's supposed to be this angle because this angle here looks acute. And this guy is obtuse, so I'm thinking 12x plus 2y is kind of big. It's probably obtuse. Unclear. This guy's right in the middle between the two angles almost. I call that a crappy question. Okay, so it should have had like a little arrowhead on here so pointing to this angle right at it. So how about 12x plus 2y equals 126? So 12x plus 2y equals 126. So notice I have two different equations in the same two variables. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the addition method. So these guys are the same value. I'm just going to multiply this guy by negative 1. So that's going to make negative 3x. Oops, I forgot the x here. It's 12x plus 2y. So this is going to be negative 3x and negative 2y equals negative 36. So we add those two equations. The y's go away. Woohoo! We can solve for x. So we get a total of 9x's are equal to 126 minus 36. That's going to be 0 there. 12 minus 3 is 9. Equals 90. So we divide by 9. So x is 10. <clears throat> then if x is 10, hey, um, Use this equation here. So 3 times 10 is 30, plus 2y equals 36. So we're going to minus 30 from both sides. So we get 2y here, and 36 minus 30 is 6. Then we're going to divide by 2, so y is 3. And then we're going to check that. Let's do that in green. So 3 times x is 10, that's 30. Plus 2 times y. I think y is 3, so 2 times 3 is 6. 30 plus 6 is 36. That's what it was supposed to equal. Bam, that checks. And then 12x plus 2y. So 12 times 10 is 120. Plus 2y. Y is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. 120 plus 6 is 126. Bam, that checks. I'm pretty sure that's it. X is 10, y is 3. Bada bing, bada bang, bada boom. Next problem. <clears throat> <coughs> okay. AG is parallel to CJ, so AG. So this guy here is parallel to CJ, this guy here. And AD, so this big line here, is parallel to FJ, so this long line. There we go. So which is true about the measure of DCJ? So we're looking for angle DCJ. This angle here, which is also labeled uh, R degrees. Okay. 
So we have parallel lines cut by a transversal. We knew these two guys are alternate interior angles. They have to be congruent. And since these guys are parallel and those guys are parallel, the corresponding angle up here, that's 50, has to be the same as angle R. So if this guy's 50, angle R is 50. So, and answer D. That angle DCJ, it's 50 degrees by the corresponding angle's theorem because R and, uh, well, angle DCJ and angle BAG are corresponding. So, cut on a transversal that cuts parallel lines, that, boom. The corresponding angle theorem says they have to be congruent. Next problem. So, AG is uh, parallel to CJ again. AG parallel to CJ. And AD, excuse me, I'm belching here. And I'm getting acid reflux, I think, from just eating a few minutes ago. So, AD is parallel to FJ. So, what's true about the value of N? So, N is this angle right here. So how are we going to find that? Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Well, if we could find this angle for H over here, that'd be cool. Hmm. So, so this is 30 right here. So that's 30. Oh, you know what? Let's do this. Let's do, this is 82 and 30, so these three angles here of this triangle have to add up to make 180. That's a triangle property. So 82 and 30 is 112. And we take 180 from that, and that's going to be 68. So that says angle B here is 68. And that means this guy here, I'm pretty sure is equal to 68 here. Now, what does it say? It's a diagram of a staircase railing. So these are the vertical vertical spindles on the stair line, so they should all be parallel. It's not marked that way. Hmm, I think all these guys are supposed to be parallel. Okay, so if this is 68, this corresponds to this whole angle here, which is 68. And we already know angle R is 50. So that makes this angle right here 18. Now, this angle is 30. And then what about this other angle? This is 50. Oh, I know. Because we want to find this angle down here. Because this angle down here should correspond to this guy right here. Is that going to help me? Let's see here. Dun, 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 What did I know? Oh, yes, it will. Here we go. Because if these guys are parallel right here, and parallel lines here, this is a transversal that cuts those parallel lines. This angle and this angle are alternate, alternate interior angles. They're going to be congruent. So this here, oh, these guys are parallel. AD and FG are parallel, so this is a transversal. So this angle here and this angle here are, so they're 50. And then in this triangle right here, let me do this in red. So this triangle right here. So this is a linear pair. So this is 68. So the supplement to 68 is 112. So this angle is 112. That angle is 50. The three angles add up to 180. So 112 and 50. are going to be 162. And the supplement, because the three angles add up to 1A, so the difference here is this little red angle right in here is going to be 18. I love it when the dogs bark.
Okay. So, we're looking for the value of n. I know. So this big angle here should be the same as that. So those big angles are the same. So this is 50, 18, and 30. So we can figure out what this guy is. So 50 and 30 is 80, and 18 is 98. So we go 180 minus 98. So 180 minus 100 would be 80 plus 2 more. So this is 82. And then this big angle here is the 82 plus the 30. That's the segment or angle addition postulate. So that's 82 and 30 is 112. So this guy right here is 112. So 3n plus 7 equals 112. So we're going to minus 7 from both sides. So 3n is going to equal 105. We're going to divide by 3. So 90 divided by 3 <coughs> is going to make 30. The other 15 is 5. So n is going to equal 35. Boom. That's where we're asked to find the value for n. And directly, I don't see directly how that works. Let me clean everything else up here. Okay, now it says by the corresponding angles theorem, I'm thinking here because we said this angle here, BGH, corresponds to CHG. We said BGH was... Uh, uh, 112, so this guy here, uh, CHJ had equal 112, but that didn't solve for N directly. But I'm guessing answer D is 35 by the corresponding angles there. Okay, next problem. Oh, we be done. Good. It's over 20 minutes. Good enough for me. Okay, if you have more questions on this, it's time for tutoring, baby. Other than that, ciao.